Hi everyone, welcome back to Totally Forkable and welcome to part one in what is going to be a series about, as you can tell, vegan bacon. So in this first video, I'm going to be making shiitake bacon, which is probably my favorite vegan bacon out there. And it's also incidentally the easiest one to make in my opinion. It's soy free, it's nut free, it's, what else is it? Gluten free. So first and foremost, before you turn this video off or say this one's not for me, if you are a mushroom hater, I will share with you that I am also a mushroom hater. Like it's, I would say like one of my personality traits that I hate mushrooms and it's a big source of conflict with a lot of people because they don't understand how a vegan could hate mushrooms. Well, guess what? I hate them. They're slimy, they're gross. And that's why it is so shocking that I would like this recipe as much as I do because I never imagined myself liking mushrooms in any form but this recipe completely transforms raw shiitake mushrooms into crispy sizzly salty savory bacon so I will be the first to admit that I used to be a huge bacon lover I remember coming home from school sometimes and just making myself like a plate of bacon because I loved it so much and I used to love like all different kinds of like salty cured meats. Like I loved salami, I loved pepperoni, I loved jerkies, Slim Jims even. I don't know, maybe that sounds really gross to some of you. A lot of us that are vegan now, I'm sure at one time enjoyed the taste of maybe some of those types of meat. I know that the majority of the world still does enjoy those tastes. So. Just because we're vegan, it doesn't mean we can't still enjoy things that have a nice umami flavor and remind us of those things that we used to eat. And with bacon, for example, I don't really think it's the fact that it's made from pig flesh that makes it taste good. I think it's the fact that it's oily and it's salty and it's got that umami flavor. And you can capture those elements and make it taste just as good using plant-based alternatives. But I feel that since I was a bacon lover at one point, it gives me authority to claim that this shiitake bacon tastes so shockingly like bacon that I really don't think you'll miss it at all. Um, I just made this at Christmas. I did like a vegan fromage and charcuterie plate and I did shiitake bacon on one part of the plate and everyone loved it. It was a huge crowd pleaser. My cousins, who are probably the biggest meat eaters that I've ever met, tried it and they liked it, which was kind of shocking to me, but also not really because that's how good it is that it will impress even the biggest meat eaters out there. Halfway through, you'll see I do a little surprise twist that I think just kicks it up to a whole other level of deliciousness, but you'll have to watch to see what that is. And another thing that's great about the shiitake bacon is it's really versatile. So I usually make it just as like a breakfast bacon when I'm uh, when we make like a tofu scramble or something like that. The way um, Chef Chloe made it when she did her Today Show recipe was she sprinkled it on top of a cauliflower mac and cheese and that was really good. You could use it as like bacon bits in baked potatoes, sprinkle it on top of a, bro a roasted Brussels sprout. I mean there are so many ways that you can use this and honestly if you're like me, you will probably just end up eating it right after you make it because, I don't know, I've never had it stay around for long enough to use it in a different recipe. So I wanna get into the video now. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is my first video using my overhead uh, filming rig it, that took me so long to figure out. And so I'm really excited to do a lot more videos with that perspective. So let me know if you guys like it and let's get into the video because I don't want you guys to have to wait any longer to learn about this amazing recipe. Let's get rolling. So here I have my bag of shiitake mushrooms. These are organic shiitakes and I bought them in bulk at Whole Foods. Whole Foods always has the best organic shiitakes in my opinion. I love that I can buy them plastic free in my reusable produce bag. By the way, I talk about these in my zero waste travel essentials video and I will link to the bags that I buy below. I find the Whole Foods shiitakes are just always so big and beautiful and tasty. The bigger the caps are, the bigger the bacon slices will be, which I definitely 
definitely prefer. These shiitakes were actually smaller than what I usually find at Whole Foods, but they're still really nice and high quality. You should be able to find shiitakes pretty easily in your grocery store. Usually they come in a little plastic box or sometimes there will be a bulk option. I actually just noticed at Whole Foods when I bought these that they had boxes of pre-sliced organic shiitakes, which would save you all this prep that I'm about to do. So that's pretty cool. This was about a pound of shiitakes. As you can see, it's a lot, but they cook down quite a bit. The amount that you use is really up to you. You can make as many or as few as you like, but I like making a lot because we always eat them all in one sitting. So next I'm going to remove the stems from the caps. The stems come off pretty easily. I usually anchor the cap with my thumb and forefinger and use my other hand to grip the stem really close to the cap and gently just kind of pull and twist and the stem should come right off. Just be careful because the caps can be delicate. If you get a small tear in the cap, don't worry about it. It will still be delicious. So as you can see, I've put all my caps in a strainer and we are just going to give them a good rinse. After washing, I like to lay out a clean dish towel and spread the caps out on there. And then I layer another dish towel on top and press down gently to dry off the caps as much as possible. You can obviously use paper towels here, but I try to keep my paper towel use to a minimum and dish towels work great for this. You can also do this a few hours or even a day or two before you're planning on making the bacon so that the caps can really dry out, but I don't have time for that right now. Once the shiitake caps are dry, we're going to start slicing them. Make your slices about a half inch thick like I already said, they are going to cook down a lot, so the size you see is much bigger than what the final size will be. Some caps are much thicker than others, so here you can really see the size difference. So just be aware of that when you're slicing. If it's a thicker cap, make the slices a little thinner because you want all the strips to be as close to the same size as possible so that they cook evenly, if that makes sense. So just basically use your best judgment on that. Now that we have all of our shiitake strips, we're going to get a baking sheet. So I have a baking sheet here with a silicone baking mat on top. This is the brand Kitsini. I bought it off Amazon and I will link it below. Silicone baking sheets are amazing for giving you a nonstick surface without having to use parchment paper or excess oil. They're also really easy to watch and infinitely reusable. I highly recommend getting a few of these. So now I'm going to put my shiitake pieces on my baking sheet. So I actually like putting them all in a pile in the center of a sheet and then drizzling it with olive oil. I've never actually measured the amount of oil, but I would say it's probably about a tablespoon. I've made this recipe with and without oil and I recommend making it with oil. Bacon is really greasy, so while it still tastes good without oil, it just doesn't have the same effect and it doesn't get as much of the crispiness as we like. So now I am mixing with my hands to spread the oil evenly. You can also use tongs for this, but the pieces are pretty fragile right now, so I like to use my hands because it's a bit more gentle. And I am adding a tiny bit more oil. You'll kind of get a feel for how much oil to use the more you make this. Now I'm going to spread the strips out evenly and I'm trying to avoid overlap as much as possible, again, so that they will cook evenly. And now we are going to get the next important element, which is salt. So I am using pink Himalayan salt. It doesn't really matter what kind you use. Just make sure it's ground, obviously. I've never made this recipe without salt, but I have undersalted it before, and I promise you that the salt is very, very important. It really brings out the umami flavor, and again, real bacon is not only greasy, it's also very salty. So do not do yourself or your taste buds a disservice by undersalting it. Now, if you're afraid of putting too much salt, I totally understand that, and I would recommend to go easy on the salt here, and then you can always add more salt at the very end. And now these guys are ready to go in the oven. 
Normally you would leave it in for about 20 to 30 minutes or until the bacon has a nice medium brown color and is crispy. My pan was pretty crowded so it took somewhere on the longer side. Make sure to keep a close eye on them after about 15 minutes because once they're done they will burn quickly. If the slices are really thin, I mean you'll want to keep an eye on them after about 5 to 10 minutes. Um, you'll kind of get a sense for it, but just don't let them go unattended for too long. But I am taking mine out after 15 minutes because here is my special surprise that is really going to kick this shiitake bacon up a notch. Our neighbor has a maple syrup farm and it is honestly the best maple syrup I've ever had. So I like to put some maple syrup in a little ramekin and then take a silicone basting brush and use that to gently brush some maple syrup all over each piece. This is totally optional, but I think it gives such a depth of flavor and brings out even more umami flavor. So when I was buying the maple syrup from our neighbor, he told me that if I like bacon, I should try brushing a little syrup on my bacon halfway through cooking. I was like, hmm, I don't eat bacon, but I'm definitely going to try this with shiitake bacon. And he was like, oh, cool. He probably thought I was crazy, but oh well. Actually, I keep wanting to bring him some to try, but honestly, we always eat the bacon so quickly that it just hasn't happened yet. Okay, and now that I've brushed all the pieces, I'm going to put it right back in the oven for about 15 more minutes. And here is our finished shiitake bacon. I really wish I could capture the smell and obviously the taste of this through the camera because it is just divine. So like I said, I left it in the oven for about 15 more minutes and then I actually turned the oven off and let it sit in there for about five more minutes. I don't think there's a name for that, but I do it so much that I made up the name faking. Like I said, I don't think that there's a word for it because I have looked it up, so I believe I coined the term faking. So let's make it a thing. It should be crispy right out of the oven, but keep in mind it will crisp up more when it cools off. But if you do have some pieces that didn't get quite as crispy like I did a little bit in the middle here, I took off all the pieces that were done and then put it back in the oven for about five minutes. It's up to you, but personally, I always really liked crispy bacon and the pieces that aren't crispy really kind of remind me that I'm eating mushrooms and <laughs> I obviously don't want that. But if you like mushrooms, you might really like that. I really think this looks like little bacon pieces and I also wanted to show you a good snap. And our shiitake bacon is complete. Holy shiitake. So there it is, there's the shiitake bacon. Did I tell you how easy that was? Give it a try, even if you're a mushroom hater, like I said, I think you'll be really surprised. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be sprinkling these recipes in with my other videos. Let me know if there's a specific type of plant-based bacon that you are particularly curious about and I will try to make it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future bacon recipes or any of my other videos. I'm gonna be doing some travel vlogs coming up, some more low waste content, more vegan stuff, fashion, etc. So hit subscribe to follow along and I will see you guys next time. Bye!